I am excited to be here because we're presenting results from over 15,000 advanced stage cancer patients um, who we've analyzed using our circulating tumor DNA sequencing platform. Um, and so that abstract was accepted for oral presentation on Tuesday. Um, and um, we, my co-authors, are really excited about that. Uh, circulating DNA was part of a press release that came out on Friday. Uh, seems to be attracting quite a lot of attention in the field as a way of being prognostic, diagnostic indicators with less of the intrusive use, for example, that surgical samples might include. So could you tell us more about how this is being set apart from other samples and the impact it could have for clinicians, patients, and everyone involved? Sure, yeah. So it is increasingly used um, for uh, basically genotyping um, these cancers so to help patients get targeted therapies. Um, and <clears throat> the traditional way of doing that has been direct tumor biopsy, um, so actually taking a uh, sample from a person's tumor and then uh, isolating the DNA from there. Uh, now one of the advantages of using a blood-based method, um, in addition to just being non-invasive and so less harmful in general, is that um, sometimes the biopsy method fails for various reasons. Uh, the tissue gets exhausted and you don't have a chance to completely genotype all of the actionable biomarkers or uh, it just, there's not enough material there, especially in lung cancer that's often a frequent complication. So. Um, with blood, we actually have the ability to, to help patients, and, and we show in this abstract that there's a number of patients where we find actionable biomarkers where a patient can get a targeted therapy where their tissue was exhausted or just uh, was called QNS quantity not sufficient. Um, and so that's, I think, one of the major um, applications for this technology is in helping out those patients. Has it been useful with ongoing patient surveillance as well? Yeah, so uh, some patients are using it for monitoring, um, which is, of course, another um, application since it's non-invasive. Um, you know, it's, it's quite difficult and, and usually not recommended to serially biopsy a patient's tumor, but um, we, we do see uh, some, for some of the patients who are doing serial testing or being serially tested that uh, you can see sort of, you know, emergence of, well, first a, a primary driver or, or driver mutations, um, and then if that patient's put on targeted therapy, emergent of resistance over, over time, over those draws. And that sort of uh, could give them kind of a heads up and saying, well, you know, this therapy may last for a little bit longer, but you might want to start thinking about what the next option would be. Now, one advantage of solid tumor samples would be, like you say, genotyping being able to determine if there is any heterogeneity within the tumor. Do circulating DNA samples offer the same kind of variability with content that way? Yeah, so uh, actually I think, um, you could argue it both ways. Um, so we uh, like to think of circulating tumor DNA as providing a global summary of tumor heterogeneity, and that's because um, as long as a sufficient number of tumor cells are shedding their contents into the blood, we're going to isolate that and find all of this subclonality, this heterogeneity, as you put it, um, from multiple sites within the same cell of tumor or potentially multiple metastases within a patient. Um, and in fact, tumor tissue biopsy sometimes has a disadvantage where if you're taking one slice or a needle poke through a tissue, you may miss a lot of the heterogeneity. Um, so, and you know, of course, you're not going to, in, in a metastatic case, uh, these are non-resectable cancers, you're not gonna capture the entire you know, solid tumor, right, when you go in there. So, um, we think right now that circulating tumor DNA does have the ability to like, capture all of that heterogeneity. Okay. And how can you see this being brought forward to wider clinical use? Well, it is already used quite widely. I mean, we have over 2,000 already oncologists just within the U.S., for example. We're aware that, you know, that we would like to continue to improve our sensitivity, um, and we have a lot of efforts to do that. Um, we recently announced an effort to uh, try to do earlier stage detection. Um, right now, we are just, um, test is just indicated for stage three and stage four, um, so very late stage disease. Um, but then again, you have this sensitivity problem where the uh, less tumor material substances within the patient, potentially the less DNA that would be shed into the blood. Um, now we actually have had some very promising results in a couple of different studies, um, I think some of which is uh, being presented at this meeting, um, showing that we can detect circulating tumor DNA in, in stage two um, patients, at least in some sub subset of them. But it's very early days, so we're working very hard to try and you know, uh, potentially expand into that realm.